Well, here we are, the first hump day video of 2018, and I've got one hell of a story for you. But first, a big shout out to each and every one of you who supported this channel so well throughout 2017. Four million people watched my videos, nearly 30,000 people subscribed to the channel, and I simply cannot thank you enough. Honestly, if it wasn't for all of you, I wouldn't be doing this anymore. Anyway, on to tonight's story. Now, I know a lot of you work the night shift, a lot of you are doing security guard jobs and things like that. So, try not to get too scared by this one, it might be a bit too close to home. But a great story anyway, so, sit back and relax with your favourite drink, my dear friends. It's 2018, and once again it's time to listen. I woke up late. First day on the job, and I would be late. It wasn't going to make a good impression for my new employer. I was so angry with myself for playing video games too late into the night, and not going to bed at a decent time. My parents don't want me to do this job, so they didn't even assist in waking me up while I slept past my alarm. I just recently turned 18. I didn't want to work in a fast food restaurant anymore, so I applied for a security guard position and got hired. My parents say that an 18 year old has no business being a security guard. They wanted me to keep flipping burgers because I was close to becoming an assistant manager. <sighs> Screw that. I was ready to get away from the food industry. The security guard gig seemed like a better solution. It was pretty cool too. I would be guarding a wildlife preserve in a warm guard shack, and even get my own truck to use to patrol the grounds. Best of all, I'd be alone out there to play on my phone as I wished. But now, I was late, and it might be a possibility that I'd finally arrive out there and be terminated on the spot. I hope not, but I'm going to race to the location. I don't have anyone to call to say I'll be late either. The drive to the site was long. It was about an hour away from my house, nestled deeply in the surrounding national forest. I had to take a one-lane dirt forest road for about a mile to where the guard shack was situated. Upon arriving, I noticed another guard standing outside of the shack, leaning up against it and smoking a cigarette. He was a much older man, probably in his sixties, and he didn't look happy. Uh, first day on the job and already 30 minutes late. Where the hell are they finding you new guys? <laughs> Toys R Us? The man growled as he flicked his cigarette down to the ground and gave it a firm stop. Oh, sir, I apologize. I overslept. I'm really sorry. I, I was responding until he rudely interrupted me. Kid, I don't care. When you grow up a little more, you'll start to understand what responsibility actually means. He said, shaking his head and walking away from me back towards the door of the guard shack. I just kept quiet and followed, hoping that my tardiness would be excused. We both went into the guard shack, a small 8x8 room with a desk and a chair. There was a heater on which kept the place really warm, and a mini fridge and a microwave. There was also a coffee machine as well. Other than that, there really wasn't much of anything else. There was some sort of book on the desk that caught my attention. Those are your post orders, you know. It tells you what your job is out here. Being tardy isn't part of your job. You won't find that section in the book, the old man said, in a very sadistically sarcastic tone to his voice. At this point, I thought the man was starting to be a jerk, so, in my own sarcastic tone, I replied, Is there anything else I need to know? Yeah, I shouldn't have done that. His face changed from an eye-rolling posture to an angered complex, and he got right up in my face, an inch away from touching me, and calmly, but lightly said, Don't get cocky with me, boy. I'll break you down into the child you actually are. I did nothing. I stood there, still and quiet. I was afraid, to be honest. This guy was obviously insane. I didn't want to say the wrong thing again and make him lose his mind. 
Just do your job. Drive around once an hour. Fill in the security card logbook and read the post orders. That's it, the man said as he started for the door. But then he stopped and hesitated for a moment and said, Kia, stay away from that pipe sticking out of the ground. You'll know what I'm talking about when you see it. Keep an eye on it, but don't get close to it. Don't ever go near that damn thing. And then he left me, standing there confused and a little freaked out about the pipe. After confirming that I could no longer hear his vehicle drive down the road, I went for my phone. I installed a new game on it that I really wanted to play, but I guess somehow the stars and planets aligned to give me an intergalactic kick to my ass. Yep, no signal. Not even one measly bar. This upset me. Now I don't have anything to take my mind off the abnormally quiet forest surrounding me. And then there was the pipe issue. All I can think about is why he told me about the pipe. Why not place a sign up that warns danger if you're going near the pipe? Don't be all weird and make out some kind of horror story. Yeah, this place was starting to get to me. I decided it was time to hop in the security truck and do a patrol. The truck was nice, but I could only get AM radio stations. So, there I was, driving down a dense and narrow, pitch black, creepy forest road while listening to George Nori talk about aliens abducting people. I somehow imagined that I wasn't the only late night security guard doing the same thing. The patrol route was long, and... It was boring. There was nothing out here. For a place that's supposed to be a protected wildlife reserve, I never even saw one animal. No deer. No birds chirping. Not even a single squirrel. I wasn't about to go trot through the forest on foot, though, so I just assumed that all the critters were hiding in the dense forest surrounding me. After about 20 minutes or so of driving... I came up to a fork in the road. There was a road map in the truck to help new guys with their patrol route, so I took a look at it. A red dotted line instructed me to skip the road to my left and continue following the road to my right. But then I noticed something. The road to the left led up to a hand-written phrase. The pipe. I just sat there, in park, contemplating my next move. I mean, I am the security guard. I have access to this road. There were no signs telling me to stay away. No gates. Nothing. I thought to myself, eh, I could at least drive by it and just look at it from the truck to see what it looks like, and then I could get out of there and finish my patrol route. And that is what I wanted to do at that point. I made it a point to drive a little slower down that road. I didn't want to miss this pipe. It was super dark. But luckily, the truck had a spotlight built onto it, and I started using it to look for what might look like a pipe in the ground. I must have driven for around half an hour before finally coming to a makeshift path to my left. I stopped the truck and shone the light up a small hill, and at the top of the hill, right in the centre, there was a large pipe sticking out of the ground, pointing upwards. A spiral staircase was attached to it, leading up to the top for a view inside the pipe. When you're young, curiosity can get the very best of you. You just have to know about what something is. You can't leave things alone because you are just ignorant with age. Something in me was trying to stop me from going, but I decided to get out of the truck and walk up near where the pipe was at. The walk up to the pipe was unsettling to me. The forest was extremely quiet. No sounds of the trees moving in the breeze. No birds singing. No distant howls of wolves or coyotes. Just 
pure silence and stillness. It seemed that each step I took towards the staircase, I could hear my heart beat faster and louder. I had a very overwhelming feeling of terror unwinding in me, and any intelligent man would have turned away and left. But I was a teenager, and I just had to know everything about anything. Another unsettling feeling that I'd started to detect was the fact that each step I got closer to the pipe, the temperature around me seemed to rise. It was a cold winter night, one you had to layer up with, but now, as I approached this pipe, I began to sweat and be uncomfortable with the clothes I was wearing. I just shrugged it off and made my way to the bottom of the staircase. The pipe was wide, maybe 20 feet in diameter, and tall, at least 30 feet up to its top. I could actually hear faint noises coming from the top of it. It sounded familiar, but I just couldn't place what the noises were. Then, I did the most stupid thing I could ever do. I took my first step onto the staircase, and then another, and then another until I was all the way at the top of the deck. There was still about three feet of pipe that would enable one to lean over to take a look inside. At first I stood there, frozen, but hotter than ever from the heat around this thing. I started asking myself what the pipe could be. Maybe it houses bats or something like that. It is a wildlife preserve after all. I just don't know what got into me. I had been warned about even getting close to this thing, and here I was at the mouth of this beast. I took a deep breath and approached the side of the pipe. I slowly leaned over, not knowing what to expect, and that's when my world was turned upside down in an instant. It was bright and scorching. It almost felt as if my skin was melting away from my face, but the pain wasn't as intense, if that makes any sense. I now had a huge bird's eye view of what the pipe contained. It was a river of molten lava, banks of burning trees and scorched dirt. I could hear screams of what seemed like thousands of people, but I couldn't see anyone. I instantly regretted looking into this pipe and tried to look away, but some sort of force was holding me back. I tried and tried to raise up, but just couldn't do it. I just continued to watch in horror and hear the screams of people becoming louder and louder until my head started burning in pain from the cries. Then I heard a new sound, a loud yet low-pitched gurgling roaring, filling the pit I was staring at down below. A large, scaly, black and scorched creature was flying over the river of fire, as if it was patrolling the area. It was very large, as big as a jumbo jet. It had large bat-like wings and a large jaw full of huge, razor-sharp teeth. Each tooth was about the size of a semi-truck trailer, to give you some perspective on how big this thing actually was. It had pit viper-like eyes, as large as cars, with a fiery glow to them. It jerked its head up, locked its sight onto me, and roared as it rapidly flew my way. Oh, I wasn't going to let this thing take me. With all my might, I pushed myself backwards, and some sort of miracle must have occurred, because I fell back onto the deck surrounding the pipe. I rose up quickly, expecting the creature to fly out of the mouth of the pipe. Nothing. I was shaking, and tears were running down my face. I had to get away from that pipe. I raced down the stairs quickly, and then took a quick look at myself feeling around my head and face, making sure I was okay. I seemed okay. I confirmed that I was okay, and began a quick walk to the truck. 
The walk back to the truck was different than the walk to the pipe. Silence and stillness filled the air when I originally made my way there, but the walk back was different. Trees were moving in the wind, cracking, and I could hear some of them falling. Things were going bump in the night in the forest, yet it was obvious that someone or something was out there in the trees, watching me. I could hear faint whispering when I stopped to shine my flashlight into the trees. The whispering stopped. It was only when I began walking that it started back up again, and the faster I walked, the louder the whispering became. I couldn't make out anything, though. It almost sounded like an unknown language, almost like some strange form of Latin. Finally getting to the truck, I got in it and locked the doors. I started the truck up, turning the radio on quickly and shrieking in terror to hear the noises coming from the speakers. It was that loud, roaring sound from the creature in the pipe. I tried changing channels, and every channel was the same thing. I turned the radio off and drove the truck as fast as I could away from the pipe. The whispering started again. It was so loud that it was hurting my head. And then, all of a sudden, silence. I was off the road that led to the pipe, and back on the main forest road that would take me to the guard shack. I just continued to drive, quickly, to get to the shack. Upon approaching, with the guard shack in my sights, I noticed headlights and someone moving around by the building. I pulled up to the building, got out of the truck and shone my flashlight near to where I'd seen the movement. Hello? Security, please show yourself, I said, scared of what it might be. I wasn't armed. I didn't even carry a pocket knife. Howdy, son. My name is Tom, and I am the local forestry law enforcement officer, said a tall, gentle-looking man, walking out of the darkness and into the light of my flashlight. I dimmed my light down and went to shake the man's hand. I introduced myself. He was a very nice man. Calm, collected. He told me that he liked to come back and check on us each night to make sure everything is okay. The Forest Service is the ones who hired our security company to guard this site in the first place. I invited him into the shack to hang out for a bit, and he accepted. He started asking me simple questions. What made me want to get into security? What was my favorite baseball team? Simple questions two people would ask one another to get to know each other a bit better. Each of my answers were short and hesitant, because of the horrors I'd just witnessed at the pipe. It must have made him suspicious. What's the matter, son? Tom asked, with a look of great concern on his face. There's this pipe on a hill. Oh, I I looked into it. I, I saw... I mean, I can't... I started to say, only to lose the words to the end of the statement. But it didn't matter, because the tone and mood of Tom had changed. He went from being a gentle-looking man, to eyes as wide as they can be, mouth open, a pale tint covering his face, and a look of terror staring back at me. He didn't move. He didn't talk. He just stared with that terror-filled look. I can only imagine that my facial response was something along those same lines. I finally had to break the silence and say, What? Why are you looking at me like that? He said nothing. His face remained frozen with that awful look. He just backed up, opening the door of the shack, never taking his eyes off of me. I slowly followed him. He continued to back up until he reached his truck. And then, with a flash, he jumped in and sped off without response. I was confused. I was scared. I didn't understand what had just happened. I didn't understand anything that had happened for that whole night. What I did next was the only rational thing I could think about doing. I cried. I sobbed. 
I sat on the ground, knees cradled into my chest, and I bawled my eyes out. Eventually, after a good cry, I got up, not feeling any different. I still felt terror, confusion, and a fear in me that I don't think will ever leave. I made my way to the guard shack and stayed in it until my relief arrived the next morning. My relief was a different man than the one I'd met at the start of my shift. He came into the guard shack, pulled a chair up close to me, faced me, and sat down. I didn't say a word. I didn't even greet him. I talked to Forestry this morning. You looked in the pipe, he said to me with a look of sadness on his face. I just faintly nodded in response to his statement. I'm not going to fire you, because that wouldn't matter. You won't ever come back to this place again after today. No one does after they look into that thing, he continued, while shaking his head with that same look of sadness on his face. What is it? What is in that thing? I said in a low tone, voice starting to crack. All I'm allowed to say to you is that it's contained, at least for now. But with the way things are going on in this world, I don't know how much longer we can keep it buried away from the world, he said, and continued. I guess it's up to all of us to figure out a way to keep it contained without actually knowing that it's really down there to begin with. He then got up, as did I. We shook hands, so I left. I never returned to that place again. I never even spoke of that place again. I went back to work for the food industry and eventually made assistant manager. I keep what I saw a secret, and act as if I'm okay. But every night... I go to sleep. I dream the exact details of that night over and over again. To those of you who might find a pipe in the ground like the one in this story, don't look into it. Don't go near it. Stay away from that damn pipe. So, first time I've done one of the author's stories, and I really enjoyed doing it. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. Any comments, any thoughts you have on that, please don't be shy. Leave a comment below the video, and I'll do my best to get back to you. Ah, I'm starting a new series on Friday, a deep web story. Um, Multi-part story, but I'm going to do the first two parts together in the video on Friday. So, I hope you're all looking forward to that one. And, of course, I'll be continuing some of my other long-running series very soon. Well, that's it for me for this evening. Back on Friday, but until then, bye bye. Thank you so much for choosing to spend your time listening to me. Now, if you enjoyed the Dr. Creepin experience, then come find me on Facebook. Come chat with me on Twitter. Listen to the background music and download it if you like on SoundCloud. Drop by the store, pick up a t-shirt. And, importantly, if you've got a story you'd like me to read, send it to Dr. Creepin's Vault, the subreddit I set up so that I could read your stories. Now, Looking forward to seeing you all again real soon, so come check me out, okay? <laughs>